Hello. Uh, today I'll be looking at the Slack internal API. Uh, I mean, I use Slack daily. It's really interesting for me to look uh, under the hood and see how it works. Uh, so as usual, I uh, loaded the Slack Android app to my Android emulator, and I'm also using Proximan to proxy the traffic and look at the API. And I have to say, this is really this is really a nice API. I mean, this is a beauty. Uh, it's really well built. It's really, really well documented. One of the more interesting parts is that they actually use the, the same API for the app as the, the public external API, which is something really interesting. Not every company can do that, but if you have a really well built API, you can do it. Uh, the thing is you have to, to be really uh, cautious when you change things because it's not only your internal API, it's a public API that is used by your customers in many ways that you don't know. And it saves a lot of maintenance. So many companies have different APIs for the internal API and the external API, but if you can do, if you can unify them, it will save you a lot of maintenance work and testing work. Uh, so everything is really, really self-explanatory. You can see the documentation on the website because it's basically the same with just a few simple nuances. So everything is really well documented. Um, and yeah, and, and I've noticed a couple of interesting things. So um, one of the more interesting bits is, for example, the post message. Uh, so you see that it sends uh, a client message ID, which I looked for, maybe it's being returned by a, any other API, but I couldn't find it. And then I learned that they basically generate a UUID on the client side for every message they create. And uh, I mean, that that's interesting. It makes you wonder, Will we ever uh, will we ever uh, encounter a collision between the two AP two UIDs? Because if you generate them on the client side, you don't know they're unique. Uh, but that's actually not really a big concern. I mean, if you look uh, if you Google up UID and the chances for collisions collisions, you'll see that uh, only after generating one billion UIDs every sec second for the next one hundred years, uh, you'll get like really high probability for collision and, and collision and that's not a big concern for them i mean they're generating about uh, from what i googled uh, one and a half billion messages every month and still they're really far from getting a uid collision so uh not a big concern uh once you get these apis uh uh and you can load them into any tool you can basically play with them and run them i just uh loaded the post message and then the leap message to load me uh, it's really simple. It's really fun. You can just like uh, play with it. You can send the message. You can be, see that the message is created and then you can delete it. It's really fun. I mean, you can tweak uh, and play with it. Uh, really interesting. Uh, one of the interesting bits I noticed that usually you delete the message by ID. Uh, <clears throat> Slack are using uh, the timestamp to delete the message. So basically the ID for every message is the timestamp. Also interesting if there are possible collisions here, but uh, also I don't think it's a big problem. Uh, so that's it. I mean, uh, feel free to write me and ask me for, to analyze any other app and have a good rest of your week. Bye-bye.